influencers with millions of followers and millions of dollars, their friends also have millions of followers and millions of dollars. And the people around them also have millions of followers and millions of dollars. And it feels normal to them. And their brains still find a way to make that mean that they're not good enough. Do you know what I'm saying? Our brains will do this to us at every single level. Hello beautiful people and welcome back to another episode of Mixed Feelings with Kira Bria. I hope you are well and I wanted to let you know that I have been thinking of a little bit of a different structure for this podcast. Not different but like more structured um, because I want to try and be better at that. So I, I'm going to start doing like a weekly either mantra or like words of wisdom kind of thing and then also like weekly recommendations because I think that's fun and I feel like you would like that why not right so today's like words of wisdom or mantra I think sometimes it's going to be a mantra sometimes it's not really going to be a mantra and it's going to be more like you just need to hear this once you don't need to repeat this to yourself in the mirror kind of thing but today's is don't follow the thought down the rabbit hole because if you if you are aware of like meditation if you've ever done like a guided meditation you probably will kind of know what this means but like for me the words don't follow the, th the thought down the rabbit hole reminds me that when you are presented with a thought in the present moment you have the option to follow it down the rabbit hole into a spiral of anxiety and worry or obsession or what whatever the thought is right it depends or you can just let it go away and just watch it pass by and you can stay present, right? You have those two options. And a lot of times involuntarily, we end up following the thought down the rabbit hole into a downward spiral of whatever it may be. And we actually have the choice not to do that. So sometimes when thoughts cross my brain that aren't necessarily pleasant, I say to myself, don't follow the thought down the rabbit hole. And it usually helps. Sometimes I still do follow the thought down the rabbit hole. I mean, I'm not a magician, but anyway, that's my words of wisdom for this week. Um, recommendations for this week. So I went to Indigo the other day to get books that are fiction because I realized like all I've been reading since high school is like nonfiction and like, you know, something about spirituality, something about self-help, like all of those, you know, be successful, get your life together books, which are great, but like they don't really, they don't really satisfy like the need to run away from earth. And that is why I don't, I realize that's probably why I don't read a lot is because all of my books are like helpful. You know what I mean? Like you want to be able to read with something that is just like, you know, takes you to another place. You're not always trying to like better yourself, like bettering yourself is exhausting all of the time. So I went to Indigo to get some new books and I got four books and the one that I've started and I've actually made a pretty big dent in so far is Normal People, which you may have heard of. I didn't realize it was a book. Um, I heard of like the, I don't know what it's, it's on Hulu, I think. Um, I heard of like that series and I heard that people loved it, but I didn't realize it came from this book. So I'm reading the book. It is, it is really, really good. It's, I would really, really recommend it for somebody who's looking for like a good, a good fiction book to read. Um, it's, it's giving like Eleanor and Park, but like older so far. And I know it goes through like several years. I think it's like over the course of maybe 10 years or something like that. So there are going to be adults in the book, but it's, it's like Eleanor and Park vibes, if that makes sense. If you've read that book. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's my that's my book recommendation. I also want to recommend um, is it called Made or The Made? I think it's Made on Netflix. Made is about this woman. She has a daughter and she's just escaped like an abusive situation. And it's just her journey like navigating that. Obviously, it's nuts. It talks a lot about like the difficulties women face in the legal system when they're like trying to, you know, take care of themselves, take care of their kid which is, it was really interesting the way they did that. I really liked it. So yeah, definitely check that out. Let me know what you think. So those are my recs for this week. That was fun. I'm going to do that all the time. Today, I wanted to talk about how literally everyone you're comparing yourself to doesn't exist. Because I had this epiphany maybe like during the last week. 
I realized that most of what we do when we go on social media and like compare ourselves to other people, you are actually projecting your idea of what that person's life is like and what that person feels in contrast to your own situation. So you actually have a very, very warped view of what their life is like. And I started to think about that and I was like, why, why do we do this? And why do we think it's okay? And why do we think that that's rational, right? And I had to do some deep digging and I started to think about like, cause the, I have the privilege of knowing a few people who are really where they wanna be, right? And who have done the things that they wanna do, both like semi-personally and like in passing, right? Cause I used to live in LA and I used to be in this dance company that was like a very famous dance company and had a lot of famous people in it, like famous dancers. And so obviously like those dancers would talk or, or we would have events where they would talk about their life and talk about their experience, blah, 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 blah. And I remember there's this one girl, I, I won't name her, but um, there's this one girl who I really looked up to. And I mean, she's still, she's still killing it, right? She's danced for everybody. She's danced for, she's danced for Lady Gaga. She's dan like, she, she just literally has done probably anything on her list that she she's wanted to do she's probably gone check 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 right and we were at this like we were at this q a or something and they were asking her questions about her life and like how she got to where she is like how she was so successful and then somebody i think asked her like what does she do for fun or something i don't know if that was actually the question but <laughs> that's what the answer implied and she was talking about how she started to learn the ukulele she had to pick up the ukulele to bring in like a new sense of joy and creativity into her life and that was a really big moment for me because i was like wow so you dance for lady gaga and you have to learn the ukulele to have fun what does that tell me because for me that was like years ago when i was maybe like 18 19 i want to say for me that was a bit of a oh okay so maybe the path i'm on doesn't lead to everything that i want because she is where i want to be and she doesn't seem to be where she wants to be do you know what i mean and you start to have more experiences like that like there's um, a guy who went to my school and he ended up dancing for all these amazing people and then i, w I went to the studios one day and he was there and I was like, oh, what are you doing here? And he was like, oh, I just like to come here sometimes to freestyle. Like, this is where I, this is where I get to express myself and, you know, be artistic because once you start like dancing for a paycheck, it's just a job. And again, I was like, okay, this is another person who is doing things that I want to do, who seems to be unfulfilled by the things that I want to do. And once you start to receive more and more of these stories and more and more of this information, you have to start to think about what that really means, right? And like, you also see, you see so many celebrities who are clearly unhappy, so many people who have achieved fame, success, riches, who are clearly unhappy, you, see, you know, Kate Spade committed suicide, Robin Williams committed suicide, like you see all the, and obviously those are just two examples, right? Uh, of extreme cases, but I, I don't think that neglects the fact that there are so many people in positions of, you know, success and fame that we don't see how they feel behind closed doors. Point being, I think we've been sold a dream, right? We've been sold the dream of chase your dream and then you'll be fulfilled. And because of that, we still see people who like have achieved things as like being way higher in like, you know, enlightenment and happiness, but that is simply not the truth. And, you know, we go on social media and we see, we've, you know, we follow these influencers and granted, I, I'm not saying nobody is happy. I'm, I'm by no means saying nobody is happy. I'm sure some people are happy. I just don't know them. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if I'm if I'm being truthful, like we see these influencers on on media or for me, like I see some of my friends who are doing like really amazing shit, right? Who are on tour with Ariana Grande, Normani, all these people. And and again, granted, some of them might be happy. However, 
I think what we do when we see these influencers, we picture their life that they're living. And like I said, we contrast it to ours, which already warps our perception of what's going on because we're, we're seeing that situation and our mind is automatically saying, oh, that is so much different from our situation. And I bet they feel so much different and so much happier and so much more satisfied with their life. And I bet they're exactly where they wanna be and they're loving every moment, right? We create this imaginary image of what this person is thinking, what this person is feeling, and what their life is like based on the small clip of a highlight reel that they have chosen to present to us. We literally create idealized versions of these people in our head and use it to abuse, abuse ourselves. <laughs> we use this idealized version of somebody else and we use it to tell ourselves that we're not good enough, tell ourselves that we're lesser, tell ourselves that we're so far away from where we want to be. Or we use it to, you know, some people do use it in a motivational way, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I do think it's still not entirely truthful because you're still creating an idealized life that this other person has and comparing it to yours and saying, I bet they feel all of these amazing things while I'm sitting here feeling like shit. And we torture ourselves for no reason because the thing is, these people are probably not that happy. Like, I'm not saying that they're not happy, I'm not saying that they're unhappy, but no way in hell are they as happy as we think that they are. And no way in hell are they as happy as the idealized version of them that we've created in our brain is. And the reason that I know this too is because even just in my experience, like being on TikTok, I remember, I remember when I just started TikTok, all I wanted was 10K. Cause I was like, once you get 10K, then you can be in the creator fund and then you have 10K, yada, yada, yada. You get to 10K. I got to 10K, I was excited that I got to 10K. I did get to join the creator fund. That was fun. Um, but once I got to 10K, it wasn't really that big of a deal anymore because well, I had 10K. And then I was like, okay, well, I think the next big deal will be 50K. 50K comes around. Nah. I, it is what it is. Because the thing is, when you start to want 50K, you might be at 10K, but by the time you're about to get 50K, you have 49.5K. Do you know what I'm saying? So it doesn't feel that different. It never is gonna feel that different. And what I started to realize is that you can only see the level that you're at. So if you're at the bottom, that's gonna feel normal to you because you're at the bottom and you're only seeing the bottom. When, when you're at you know, the middle and the top, that is also going to feel normal to you because you're looking at you. You start to look around. You're only going to see people like you. And what I mean by that is like now that I have like over 200K, my mutuals have more than that. Do you know what I'm saying? And you, you, you see the people, you start to see the other people on your level once you get there. And then you don't feel so special and then you don't feel so accomplished. Right. So I can only imagine like even if you're talking about influencers with millions of followers and millions of dollars, their friends also have millions of followers and millions of dollars. And the people around them also have millions of followers and millions of dollars. And it feels normal to them. And their brains still find a way to make that mean that they're not good enough. Do you know what I'm saying? Our brains will do this to us at every single level. Unless, like, not unless you work on it, even if you work on it, that will still happen, but you'll probably be able to control it better. But I think what I'm starting to realize is like your general temperament, it's not gonna change that much. You know what I'm saying? And when they say like money doesn't buy happiness, I think it can for in certain ways. And it, it obviously opens up a lot of opportunity and it opens up a lot of new experiences and it opens up a lot of new things that can definitely be good, but it also opens up a lot of new problems and a lot of new situations that you would get in that could cause problems and a lot of more people to compare yourself to. And I think the more, I don't know, the more I grow and the older I get, it just becomes more evident that you, you have to create your own, you have to create your own meaning, you have to create your own self-worth and you have to create your own happiness because no matter how successful you get, you're not just gonna be like automatically happy even though our brains tell us when we look at other people that we think 
their lives equate happiness, whether it be through, you know, material material goods and like how, how much cool stuff they have, how nice their house is, stuff like that. We think that that makes somebody happy. That person literally, their brain, their brain probably doesn't let them be happy because our brains hate us. Our brain, <laughs> fuck our brains, man. Fuck our brains. Cause no matter what's going on, your brain will find a way to contextualize it to give you something to worry about. And I think that just goes to show that there's no good being done right now if you are looking at people who are where you want to be or who have more than you and like saying, I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when I have what they have. I'll be happy when I do what they do or when I do more or when I have more because you won't necessarily be. The idealized versions of happy people that society has created for us are not only unrealistic, but are also very dangerous. <laughs> I think it's dangerous to always, because now we have this mentality that always pushes the finish line, right? And we think that we're, you know, we keep pushing because we're like, okay, well, there's got to be something at the end of this rainbow because I was promised something at the end of this rainbow. I was promised gold for doing this work and for reaching the point that I had set my goal to, right? I was promised happiness at the end of the rainbow. Where the fuck is the golden bucket? Do you know what I'm saying? And it, it's like, it's just so dangerous because I, I, the levels of happiness within people I don't think are necessarily that different. Like, I really don't. Obviously, some people are missing their basic needs. And so that is like a fight or flight situation that they're always in. But once you get to like your needs are met, I don't know. And th there's, um, there, <laughs> there's this really, uh, there's this quote that runs through my head sometimes from the really profound resource of Teen Wolf. Um, I, I didn't watch a lot of Teen Wolf. To be honest with you i think i watched like uh, the first couple seasons and i used to this is a tangent i used to rent i used to be a library rat and i used to rent like um dvds from like the library and the different you know i'd watch the whole vampire diaries series just renting out the dvds from the library and then i did it for for teen wolf for the ones that they had they didn't have a lot um and i remember one of the episodes I don't remember what happens and I don't remember who said it. I think it was the vet, the veterinarian of whatever hospital in whatever town. He said something to Mr. Crooked Nose. Can't remember his name right now either. Not Dylan O'Brien, the other one. <laughs> um, he said to him, there's always gonna be regression towards the mean. And the term regression towards the mean has stuck with me because basically it just means, regression towards the mean just means, you know, you're gonna have this scope of things that are gonna happen and things that you're gonna feel, but it's always probably gonna come back to pretty much where you're at, right? Regression towards the mean, to me, is what I was saying about temperament. Like, you're, how you feel right now, in terms of like happiness level, um, the only reason it's going to change is because you're doing like internal work on yourself and like maybe you're meditating, whatever you're doing, like mental work or therapy, things like that. But your situation, your external situation, I don't think it's going to change your internal that much because your internal is always going to just regress towards the mean, which is what it is now. It's your it's your your temperament that you probably have had for a lot of your life. That is what it's always going to come back to no matter how much money you get, no matter how much fame you get. Also f like fame period, like I am already kind of cool off fame. Like I don't, ha I obviously don't have very much. I think I have too much for the amount that I'm benefiting, benefiting from it though. Meaning like when I go out, if I'm going somewhere in Toronto where there's gonna be young people, like a couple people are probably gonna recognize me, right? And I feel like if you're gonna be recognized, like you should be rich. Do you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> if you're going to have like not as much privacy as before, I think like you should just be rich at that point. Like otherwise it's like, okay, so now 
you're losing the privacy and you're still living in like random neighborhoods. Do you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like weird, but TikTok does that. Like TikTok gives you massive exposure with like little, gives you very little back kind of thing. And that, that's fine. Like you sign up for that, whatever. I mean, do you though, whatever. But for me, like I get a, I don't actually, lately I haven't been getting that much hate. Fingers crossed. Lately I haven't been getting that much hate, but from all of the drama that has happened since I've been visible on the internet, I can tell you for a fact, fame is not cool. Like, and I'm not famous, right? I'm, I'm semi TikTok famous, but just from that I am already like, fame is really nothing to brag about and fame is nothing that you really desire or like, like, and I, I'm, I'm chill. Like I can still go outside. You know what I'm saying? Um, I do kind of sometimes like get a little bit anxious, not anxious, but like I'm hyper aware of the possibility of somebody watching me. And like, it, it is kind of strange sometimes because sometimes I'll go places and then afterwards someone will DM me like, Hey, I saw you at this place, but I didn't want to come up and say any, anything because you were in the middle of a conversation. And the thing is, then I'll think back to that moment and I'll, I'll remember feeling watched. And all of this is to say, it's not that great. Like it's fine. I'm not complaining. It's, it's really fine. But I think a lot of people think like fame is like really cool. And just from my like slight experience of it, I'm like, eh, could do without it. You know what I'm saying? Cause I like the ability to be kind of incognito and have nobody know who I am. Um, and I still like, I still can do that a little bit, but like, not like, cause you know, once you start getting recognized with a mask on, you're like, okay, so I mean, I guess y'all know who I am then, you know? Cause like, if you have a mask on and a hat on and somebody still knows who you are, people can recognize you. Um, but I think a lot of people look forward to being like, I, I remember when my friend was texting me, asking me how, how she could be famous. And I was like, man, start a TikTok. If you're really pressed for fame, TikTok can do that for you. It won't give you the money to accommodate that fame that makes the fame worth it, but pff, go off, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and you just, you just start to realize it's like, you know, cause I have a lot of followers now and I have a decent amount of followers on Instagram too. Now it really has not made very much of a difference in my temperament and happiness at all. It obviously it creates more opportunities which can lead to success, which is like a good thing, but it won't necessarily make you happier. All of this to say, whenever you catch yourself comparing yourself to someone, stop because your idea of that person literally does not exist. That person doesn't exist. What does exist is a person who is probably a beautiful mess and who shows you the beautiful parts. And, and that's fine too. Like that's not their fault. Like I don't, I, I don't think anybody is required to show you their messiness or show you their dark times. I don't think that's necessary, but I do think that we need to remember that the people we're comparing ourselves to and the lives we're comparing ourselves to and the lives that we're waiting for in a certain aspect those don't exist. And I think we're going to be a beautiful mess the whole time, like forever. So just, just like buckle in. Do you know what I'm saying? There's things you will do that are great. And there are, there's things that will happen that will make you feel amazing. But I, and I know it's super cliche, like the down times put the high times in perspective kind of thing. But I think we're all just collectively waiting for like that moment of success and happiness and pure joy that sustains for the rest of our life. And that's not happening. Like that's not coming. So I think we should kind of stop waiting for it. I think the waiting is dangerous. And I think the, the comparing to a situation that does not exist is dangerous. And I think even like, even not even just people, but like situations, like maybe you are living somewhere. I mean, <sighs> Living with people, if you're living with um, people that you really don't like and you're 
waiting for the day that you live with somebody or if you live alone like that actually will make a big difference but i'm saying like maybe if you're you're, you're stuck in one city and you really really want to go to the next city like that that could be a great opportunity for you that could be a great journey but that's not gonna like make you happy you're gonna have different problems there right you're, you're gonna have to move you might have to you might be really lonely because maybe you don't have new friends like blah 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 there's gonna be just different problems so i think we're just constantly waiting for like the the perfect band-aid or the perfect like flip to switch that turns off our our sadness and our longing and our need to compare and just makes us like completely satisfied and it's just not coming <laughs> like that just isn't happening and that doesn't mean you can't be overall happy but that would be due to like internal work and consciousness really and like awareness and being in the present moment more than you are ruminating so yeah i hope that made some kind of sense that was just something i felt was really important to say and i think it's really important to keep in mind as we move through the world especially the world of social media and you see whether or not these people's pictures are photoshopped whether or not they're telling the truth about how they feel that day even still we attach certain like mental happiness and fulfillment tags to what we see and it's like they don't feel that way they don't feel that way at all and so to use that against ourselves in comparison to ourselves to tell ourselves that we're lesser is simply cruel to ourselves and we just it's so unnecessary we don't need to be doing that so yeah i hope that made sense <laughs> that is it for this week's episode thank you so much for watching and or listening don't forget to like and subscribe share this episode with a friend give it a five star rating on apple podcast um and follow me on instagram at kira bria i did hit 10 10k i'm actually at 10.3k now which is amazing but i always appreciate a follow um and i always post about my new content there when my podcasts are up when my youtube videos are up so yeah yeah i think that's it thank you so much for watching and or listening and i will see you next time bye